So there you have it. Nice plus saw equals paddle. Didn't take long. I'm out of the breath. It was easy. Totally doable. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I'm going to make a canoe paddle using a folding saw and a knife. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I came out here in the woods and uh, I, uh, using an axe, um, a 28 inch handle, two and one quarter pound axe. Uh, I felled the tree, cut it into a six foot, six foot section. Um, using wedges, I split that six foot section into some pieces and then using the axe and the knife, I carved it into a rough and ready, um, you know, canoe paddle. Not the most beautiful thing ever, but functional. And then I got to thinking, you know, over the course of the week, um, how often am I actually in the woods with an axe like that? I mean, if I'm going in the woods for multiple days overnight, especially in the winter, uh, of course I'll always have an, I'll have a, I usually have a saw and an axe, right? And basically a, a means to make a big warming fire and a backup for that means to make a big warming fire, just in case, right? So I usually have a folding saw and an axe. Um, you know, but if I'm going in, most of the time, I mean, I've got a full-time job, right? This, this channel, all this stuff I do on YouTube is not my main source of income. I'm nine to five, I'm, you know, working. Uh, so, uh, most of the time when I'm in the woods, I'm in the woods for the day or for the afternoon. And I don't bring a big ax with me, right? If I'm going fishing for the afternoon, I don't have a big ax with me. Or if I'm just out hiking around, scouting out different spots, that sort of thing. Um, I don't have a big axe with me. What I normally have in my kit is this, right? Because it's just, I just stick it in my pocket here and it can do a lot. It can fell a large tree and it weighs nothing. It's not a pain to take with me, right? I mean, an axe is the most versatile, arguably the most reliable, versatile northern bushcraft tool you can take into the woods. Um, rivaled only by the knife. It doesn't matter if it's the most versatile and reliable tool if you don't have it with you. And it's just not convenient to take with you, you know, whatever you're doing. If I'm going out fly fishing for the afternoon, I'm not bringing an axe. <laughs> it's just not, doesn't really go with the kit, right? But I will slide a, you know, some sort of folding knife in my, my kit. It weighs nothing to bring, and I mean, that tool is just so handy, right? I mean, you're, you're basically got you know, at the very least an Iron Age, age tool, but you know, a uh, sophisticated ax that, you know, sort of Japanese made, or sort of saw that cuts on the pull. This is practically an industrial age tool, at the very least a Renaissance tool. So you're, you're doing pretty good if you've got a sophisticated piece of, you know, piece of, piece of kit like that with you. Um, but then there's the question, <clears throat> can it do everything an ax can do? Well, no. I mean, that's why the ax is the most reliable, versatile tool. But it can do a lot of things an axe can do, and there's certain things it can do easier than an axe. Um, certainly cutting trees, uh, easier insofar as it takes less of your energy, right? Less, less of your, <laughs> less calories, to put it that way, right? Um, you might be able to fell a tree faster with an axe, but you're using up a lot of your energy to do it. So the speed isn't necessarily a proper measure of the energy required to use the tool. Right, because an axe is, you know, can make a lot of cuts really quick, but you are, you're like maxing out. Right? It's, it's a powerful move to swing an axe. Whereas with the saw, you know, it's a, it's a pretty relaxed sort of controlled thing, right? Using the full length of the saw and using the sharpness of the blade and using the design, right? It's got less to do with your power and much more to do with controlling and using the tool properly. Um, so there's something to be said for that, right? If you're in a situation where your energy is a finite resource, right? Uh, you, you know, there, there's a good, good argument to be made for having uh, a saw around. Also, the saw is a lot safer than an ax, right? Uh, you're much more likely to hurt yourself bad with an ax than with a saw. Once you commit to a swing, everything that happens after impact, um, you know, a lot of energy is released in a big swing. So, you know, if you're not being careful, you have a moment of inattention, or you're exhausted, or you're disoriented, uh, you can do a lot of damage to yourself with an axe, right? And if you're miles from the highway or whatever, that can be a bad situation. And you're much less likely to hurt yourself badly with a saw. You might, you might get a, you know, a cut like that on one of your fingers. You might, you know, just get a little tear, right? The worst cuts you get with a saw aren't that bad, generally speaking, right? Um, because you're just in, you're not harnessing the kind of force you would harness with an axe 
or even with a knife. I mean, it's basically one of the safest tools you can use in the woods, um, right? But anyway, uh, so that's <laughs> the long, drawn-out way of saying that most of the time when I'm in the woods, I don't have an axe with me, I have a folding saw. So if I needed to replace a paddle on a canoe, I'd have to do it with one of these. So I thought it would be uh, kind of fun to work through that process. I don't know if I got enough battery on the camera, if I got enough time left today to do it. I got about maybe an hour left uh, in terms of the time I've got to do this. So uh, let's go over and uh, see what we can do with this saw and of course the knife. And we're going to be using some of these, uh, you know, a little mallet and some wedges. I mean, you know, the axe is a kind of mallet and it's a mallet and a wedge all in one. Right? It's a cutter and a wedger and a malleter. <laughs> Think about an axe like that, right? So, you know, we've got a cutter, we've got a wedge, and we've got a mallet, and we've got another cutter, right? So we can make up for the lack of an axe being, but we have to be a little more clever with these tools, right? You have to be a little, you have to think it out a little bit more. But on the, on the other side, we're not going to use nearly as much energy. It might take longer because we have to be clever and ingenious. But it probably won't be as, as, as taxing to, you know, make uh, a canoe paddle using these tools. But let's go see. I've, I've actually never done this. This is just me, and I haven't, sh I haven't looked up any YouTube videos on how to do it. I've made paddles using an axe and a knife before. I've never used a saw, so I thought it'd be fun to just work this out with you. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it makes for a good video. <laughs> All right. All right, so we, here we got a piece of wood here. I'm hoping that it's not doesn't get too many cracks in it and we can actually get one paddle out of it. Um, you know, uh, you know, dead wood, and that's what you want to use for something like that, ideally. Uh, it's got to have lengthwise cracks in it and you got to sort of read it and just hopefully you've got a, a piece with uh, a crack in it that's not, you know, um, you don't want to crack down the middle of your paddle, let's put it that way. So, along this uh, thickness here, I can see a crack right there. No matter what I do, I think this crack will probably take over the wood. So, you know, it's, it's worth just, I mean, I, I got, this, is too, this is too wide to be a paddle anyway. So why not just use that crack to reduce the thickness? Now, normally when you're splitting uh, a piece of wood, you want to take it, start splitting from the end. But I don't know where this crack goes. I can't sort of see. So just take my knife. Get it started a little bit. Use one of the finer wedges right next to the knife. I got just enough. Maybe uh, one thirty second sort of thing, half a millimeter or whatever, uh, and get the wedge in there. All right, right next to it, I get another wedge. It starts off incrementally, and uh, you find your way into the wood pretty quick. I'm going to take the knife out. Does it want to come out? No. That's fine. I'll put this in beside it. Maybe the knife will fall out once I get this in. No dice. There. See? Knife comes out. <laughs> Alright. So now we don't need a knife anymore. I can feel this prying apart as we go. And just, uh, maybe it wants to go this way. It's either going to want to go this way or this way. Again, normally you want to start from the end and work your way across, but I can't tell where this starts, so I'm just going to... Yeah, I don't think it wants to split this way. I think it wants to go in this direction. Let's see. Let's see now. We don't really need two here. that in a little deeper. Allow this one to pop out. That's starting to go. Oh yeah, that wants to go. We're almost there. Move that over a bit. All right. There we go. Let's give that a bit of a little encouragement there. Maybe a little bit more over here. A 
little more over here. There we go. All right, so that piece is gone. And we got a pretty narrow piece here. Uh, I'd say only six inches wide. But that's enough for a rough and ready paddle. I mean, that would work, especially we'll make the, we'll make the blade a bit long because um, that can be, you can just dig the paddle in deeper, right? So instead of having a, a short, fat paddle, we have a long, sort of narrow paddle. That can be useful because you can dip it in a little bit, you can dip it in deep, you can sort of vary the amount of, um, you know, energy you want to put into your stroke. Okay, so now we've got this, uh, the width we want. So now we got to get it, we got to take the thickness out, right? So now I am going to start from the end. And hopefully this thing, this stump's just great for working on here. But hopefully we can get this going here, this way. So I guess I'll start about here. Now remember the inside of this rotted out. So I want to remove, I want to, so this is the inside, this is the outside. I consider the outside wood to be the better wood since it rotted out from the inside. So I want to split away this, this thickness, right? Where my knife handle is that part. I want that part removed the whole length of it, right? So that's what I got to do here Now if you watch that video where I was using the axe, I was out of breath <laughs> for much of it You'll notice here. I'm not I'm not out of breath, right? Because uh, it's just not the same amount of work doing it this way. So I'm gonna put the uh, knife in oh about uh, an inch and a half from this outside edge Just to get a little Little thing started here. Little crack started. Hopefully that crack will go the length of the wood. Let's see what we can do here. That's not my mallet. Here we go. There goes the knife. Let's put that away so it doesn't disappear forever. Now let's see what we can do here. Get that in. I like these little fine wedges. These were, um, you know, um, maple. All the wedges are maple. Look at that, starting to go already. Now we don't want to get too far, we want to sort of control that split. Just work our way along the edge there. I'm going to jam this down in, just to fill up the space. Just keep working my way down. It's splitting good, I mean I'm lucky that I've got a, a decent grain here. Definitely splitting good, here, have a look. It's a lot easier than taking all that thickness out with, a saw, with an axe. I mean, not to say you can't do this with an axe, right? You can, you can make wedges and do this with an axe for sure. But when you've just got a saw, you're sort of uh, forced to be clever, right? You don't have the physical strength, so you gotta make up for it with uh, the mental strength, <laughs> so to speak, right? But uh, mental strength is always better. It always outlasts the physical strength. <laughs> We're just about there. I think one down here. A couple good blows. There we go. All right, so there, there's the inside part removed. So we just removed a hell of a lot of material from that piece of wood, right? Now we got this. Now this, this is about an inch, right? So there's really not much more to do uh, certainly our, our work with the wedges is done, uh, but we're not done using the saw yet. Uh, we can still save ourselves a lot of work using the saw. So step one, I would say, would be to, to fashion the end of the saw, or the, uh, the, um, the paddle the way we want it. Just get that on there. Get rid of the sort of throwaway wood. There we go. All right. Uh, maybe get a little bit of shape on that. So it sort of has a, you know, kind of paddly type shape. All right. Now we need to make a decision about where the handle starts and where the uh, blade starts. And uh, 
I'm going to go, this is about half. I'm going to go just past half, just a little bit past, maybe a hand's width past half the width of the entire piece. So one hand span. I'm going to make the blade that long. So the blade is about two feet long. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to cut that down. So what I'm going to do is make some cuts along this length. Since I got the saw anyway, right, this should help a lot. I'll show you another way. I'll do it the other side another way. But this is one way. This is gangbusters if you got an axe. But even without an axe, it's a pretty quick way to remove uh, material from a piece of wood. Just flip that around. I'm gonna make sure not to go too far down into it, or you'll, uh, you know, you'll lose your, uh, <laughs> you'll lose your center. good. All right, so now the, the exercise is to just take your knife and uh, take the mallet and work your way down. So I've got my, I've got my knife. What I'm doing here, hope I can, you can see that. I got the knife on either side. I'm pounding the other side. Right, and those little uh, chunks just blow off, just like that, right? I would, I would normally do this on the, uh, on the stump, but anyway, just so you can see, right? See how easy that is? Instead of me using all my muscle power to push, just like the lightest taps, I'm knocking that wood off. It's coming off no problem, right? So that's how we do that. All right, so this isn't birch here. This is just a piece of a fir tree. Um, you know, I'm trying to shoot a video here, so it can only uh, take so long for these little diversions. But you get it relatively straight. Notice I'm holding this with my gloves. And you just give it a, a few taps. I'd say try to get it in there about an inch. Get it in as far as you can without splitting the wood, which can be tricky. Maybe one in every uh, three or four pieces doesn't doesn't split on you, so don't get frustrated. It's worth taking the time to do this sort of thing because you're, you're less likely to get an injury, right? Give it a couple more taps there if I can get it in. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, this won't last forever, but again, a piece of birch, because see, birch has got the bark wrapped around it, it acts like a kind of duct tape and keeps it from splitting. But it is safer, right, to use the knife as a draw knife this way. And if you're back to woods, especially by yourself, right, you don't want to get hurt. This is actually coming off real nice and you're using those those little cuts you made with the saw as a guide I know once I've gone down to those saw cuts I really don't need to go much further that was pretty quick okay so that's one way to take down right remove some of the material another way is to just hold it in place and just, just go.
right, so it's already looking like a paddle. And we haven't been at it that long. <laughs> Thickness wise, a little bit thick, but we can take that down, no problem. Let me bring you in a little closer here so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see how I got this sort of anchored into my guts. <laughs> so I got it jammed to the ground, uh, I got the paddle upside down, I got it anchored into my guts, and I'm just pulling, finding corners with the knife blade, right, and just pulling them off. And you can also pry up with your blade. Once you get something going, you can give it a pry if you feel like it's gonna, if you feel like it's gonna go the right way. Another little adjustment there. Definitely coming off pretty easy. I mean, yes, I'm cutting towards myself when I'm up here, but it's really not that big a deal. You really can't hurt yourself too bad in that situation. Alright, let me give you a look down here what I'm doing. Now I'm just going on the push a little bit, shaping it. I have to say, when you've got the knife blade driven into a piece of wood, it's pretty nice in terms of control. I don't want to move too much material off of this uh, wood here because it, you know, it's not, uh, you know, not the strongest wood, right? Spruce. Well, we can use the back of the knife to sort of smooth that out a bit. See a little couple, couple high spots there. Okay, so now I've got it, you know, pretty much roughed out and it didn't take long. Uh, now we just sort of do some finishing touches and then at this stage, we're not pushing hard with the knife. We're, the knife is gliding along the wood looking for something to grab, right? That's all you're really doing. And when it finds something to grab, you remove whatever it grabs. We're sort of going along the sides, making a kind of, oh, octagonal shape to the handle. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying perfectly octagonal, I'm, I'm just speaking very generally. But you want to avoid uh, splinters and that sort of thing, but let's clean off the end here just so that uh, we know what we're working with here. Let's get a nice, nice end to it. There we go. Now I can just plant that right in the stump here, right? A vice is nice. Very safe. Especially with gloves on. Sometimes you punch the end of this, it can I actually have a cut on my fingers from doing another video earlier from punching into this, so it's good to have the gloves on. But generally speaking, it's a safe way, right, to use the to use the knife. Make a nice sort of end on this. There we go. Maybe a little maybe a little chamfer. To the end there, chamfer just means you're, you know, sort of rounding it off, right? Smoothing off the 
get a little relief there. I'm just smoothing the end off, just making it sort of rounded. I'll do the same thing with the blade end. So here I am just choked, choked way up on the blade. I'm actually holding it. I got my thumb under on the handle, but I got two of my fingers actually halfway up the blade. That's one more reason to have, you know, a short blade like that. I've basically turned this, this sort of all-purpose knife right now into a, a very fine carving knife. You know, you look at really fine carving knives, they're usually about two inches long. Now this is two inches long, and uh, it's very easy to work on this uh, piece of wood. Anyway, that's, that's basically it. I mean, that didn't take long at all. This paddle is, it's up to my armpit, so I mean, it's, it's just the right length. Um, it's, it's definitely uh, functional, right? It's a little bit, a little bit thick, but, um, you know, it's old dead spruce, and there actually does seem to be a check. See this check right here? Basically wants to crack right here. You know, if I was going to use this for any length of time, I might actually pour some, um, you know, spruce sap or fur, you know, um, boil up some pitch and use it as a glue. You can see a hairline, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's, there's a hairline crack right along there. Right, so if I had to use this for any length of time, I might actually put some uh, heated up pitch in there and then tie a rope in there and make a very strong tightening knot to hold that, you know, hold it together this way, right, if I had to, right? I mean, if I just, you know, if I was just back in the woods and needed to get out, I'd just use it like that and go for it. Really depend on how much daylight I was working with. But even a piece of string, a really good twine wrapped around there, tighten up really good with, uh, oh, what's it called, a uh, jam knot. Uh, would probably hold that together and keep it serviceable, possibly for years, right? Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty quick. I have to say this was easier to do and quicker than using the axe. Now, it could just be I had a piece of wood that was cooperating, uh, right? And it could be that I just built uh, a paddle last week, so I'm better at it, right? It could just be that, I, you know, because it's probably been about four years since I've carved a paddle, right? So um, just a little bit of practice. So, I mean, it's not really a fair comparison because this is like, you know, just like you're, you're a better parent with a second child, right? So <laughs> perhaps. But I, I have to say, I feel like I'm far less winded. It didn't take anywhere near as energy. Um, using those wedges to remove the thickness of the wood definitely uh, made it a lot easier. And of course I could have done that with the axe, but by having the saw and the knife, you are forced to use your brain and give up your body. So uh, anyway, not bad. So there you have it. Knife plus saw equals paddle. Didn't take long. I'm not out of breath. It was easy, totally doable. You know, I would still argue that the axe is the more versatile and reliable tool, harder to break, does more kinds of things, makes an excellent smasher, right? Um, but, you know, with some cleverness, using the saw, using the knife, you know, having some wedges and knowing how to apply wedges and where they need to be applied, and having a, you know, a pounding tool, right? Some sort of mallet, um, you can get by. And using the, you know, using the knife, you know, with the, uh, watch me injure myself here, but <laughs> using the knife, jammed into a little piece of wood like that, which you can cut. You know, this is you know, not impossible. You could cut a piece of wood off of the, like this, off a green tree by batoning your knife, right? You could do that. Um, very much, you know, really handy to use a saw for it. And you could do this with an ax, but you want the ends to be sort of squared off. But anyway, you, you could do this if you just had an ax as a knife too, an ax and a knife as well. Um, but this makes a huge difference. Just, just the, the control you have, the power you're able to apply, Instead of hanging onto the blade with your hands and you're just so worried about it injuring yourself. I mean, the good thing about hanging onto the blade with your hands is you, f you can really feel it, right? Um, but also in the back of your mind, you, you know you're applying a lot of force. There's a lot of injuries that can happen with a really sharp blade. And of course, you know, if, if it looks like the, the, the wood's flying off of this and everything's looking easy, uh, it's because I've got a really sharp knife, right? Um, this knife didn't cost a lot. This was a $30 knife, right? Uh, but it's got a good edge. More important, learning how to sharpen and keep a, the edge of a knife sharp is much more important than spending money on knives. 
Um, and there's all kinds of YouTube videos where guys use these Japanese sharpening stones. You don't need any of that stuff to put an exquisite, exquisite edge uh, on a knife. You know, just, just not, necess just not necessary. Um, I'll do a video on how, how I like to sharpen my knives and keep my knife sharp at a later date. But uh, yeah, you do not need expensive gear to keep your knife sharp. Um, so yeah, $30 knife. Most expensive tool here is these, these things cost about 70 bucks, so they're not cheap. But one of these and the blade on it, as long as you don't put it in the ground, right, will last years and years and years, right? Very, very um, reliable blade. And they don't break because they, because they cut on the pull, they're less likely to pinch up on you, right? When you're pushing on a saw blade, it'll pinch up and bend. But these ones cut on the pull. So you have to learn that, you know, develop the muscle memory so you're not pushing hard, right? You're, you're just, you're pulling. And you don't even pull hard, really. You're just sort of... You know, you're almost leaning back a little bit. You're using that big back muscle and you're also leaning back on the pull. And then when you're pushing, you're just basically cleaning out the saw teeth. You're really not pushing hard at all. It's just the most easy thing, right? So, yeah, definitely a good argument to be made for, you know, uh, rolling in the woods with a decent saw. You know, axe is still versatile tool, reliable, hard to break, does lots of things. But um, it's absolutely no use if you haven't taken it with you because it's too big and you just don't feel like carrying an axe. Take a saw with you every time you go in the woods. You can do a lot with a saw. You can solve a lot of problems. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell so you know when I drop a new video. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.